The Susan Brenda Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brender, and this is The Susan Brender Show. You know, it's an interesting thing. You know, some people have this lifelong gift and passion for communication, also researching an organization. My guest today, Jen Showalter, has worked in a nonprofit and educational setting as a volunteer using those same organization uh, skills and logical skills set up that help people streamline and simply logistics. And Jennifer, I want to give you my riff. You know, today, all of the schools have been closed for so long, and they're opened, and then they're closed again, and the principals, they're leaving. So are the teachers, because the, the unions are making it so difficult for them, because they have to take a shot, and some of them don't want to. So, I'm interested in knowing a little bit about what you think about this whole issue that's going on with regard to kids. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be back on your show. But yeah, it's, this is an incredible thing that's happening in our country. The fact that we have constitutional individual rights that are being violated by our own government and it includes our school boards uh, they just announced that they're reinstating a mask mandate for all adults on campus starting today uh, <laughs> which yeah. they they did mention that there is the florida statutes that were put into place which is for the students but they're still not allowing adults to make decisions for themselves and again, you know, they already have policies in place that are making it difficult for employees who are deciding not to get vaccinated or can't get vaccinated. Yeah, you know, that's a really horrible thing because, you know, we have a legislator and our legislator happens to be very good about, you know, all these things about the mask. But overall, it's not that good because of this whole issue of critical race theory. I want you to explain to our audience what that means and how it has affected you and all the people that you uh, come in contact with. Well, critical race theory is Marxism in disguise. It really isn't so much about race. It's about the systematic destruction of every aspect of our country. And they use race to do it. Uh, but race, critical race theory has different facets. One of which is being that they're teaching the next generation that they're victims. And what's the point of working if you're never gonna get where you want to anyway because of a systematically racist system, it's rigged against you. Yeah. So there's a fundamental flaw in what our education is doing. It's actually, I like to call it de-education because it's dumbing down the curriculum. It's teaching them what to think, not how to think. And with critical race theory, they're really bringing back racism. It's focused on pitting groups against each other. So if you're white, you're oppressor. If you're a minority, you're a victim. And uh, for all the victims, the system's worked against you. You're never gonna make it. Literally in our Palm Beach County School District mission statement, it says that they take, quote, full ownership of student academic mastery, unquote. Mm. So <laughs> it's yeah. not teaching our children to be independent thinkers, to be problem solvers, to be responsible. It's teaching them to be dependent on the government. Well, let me ask you something. When your children come home from school, what do they tell you? What do they say to you? Are they affected at all by the critical race theory? And do they discuss it with you at all? Um, my daughter is very non-confrontational. <laughs> so she doesn't bring it up too much. Uh, but they notice it at school. There's Black Lives Matter uh, banners and flags posted around school. Um, it was more prevalent, actually, in the elementary school. 
brain pop was being used at my son's elementary school, along with every other school in the district. And they were promoting George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. They were uh, literally going through what happened and uh, demeaning the police. It was actually really, really blatant and very horrifying. You know, you just used a word that I really don't know much about, and that is brain pop. Explain that. Brain pop is an app that is used for elementary school. It's a program that is a series of animated stories, basically, with a student and a robot. And it used to actually be a pretty good program. They would talk about a lot of different topics like history or science. Um, but then they went woke and started promoting Black Lives Matter and critical race theory. Right. So what about the school itself that your children go to? Do you find something different about the school when you take your kids there and you talk to people? What did they have to say? Well, you're not allowed on campus. Um, I haven't been, well, I, I've been on campus for football games and they just allowed us back for musicals this past semester. But for, um, gosh, since before, you know, right when COVID hit 2020, we were not allowed on campus, even for IEP meetings, everything's virtual. Wow. So you're not allowed to step foot on campus unless it's a sporting event. So your children can't, you know, not your children, rather the teachers can't really relate to what you would like to know. They, they can't tell you how your children are doing in school, can they? No, we used to be able to have parent meet the teacher night where you went into school and you went through every single period and you met the teachers and you got to sit in the classroom and talk to them. That's a thing of the past. Uh, that didn't happen for senior high this year. At the beginning of the year, we did have a very short meet the teacher event where you dropped off your materials for elementary school. And um, I refused to wear a mask and uh, I was not um, receptive. They were, they were not very receptive to my presence without my mask on, let's put it that way. What did they and, say to uh, you? What did they tell you? Um, well, I was allowed through for that event, but every time I went back, I was told I was not allowed into the office. I was not allowed to step past the sidewalk. Huh. So I couldn't wow. go into the building. That's unbelievable. Do you feel that something's wrong and do you think it can change? Oh, there's... <laughs> We are in a, in a systematic destruction of our education system. So we're way past something's wrong. We're, we're in catastrophic mode, I think. Uh, uh -huh. with, with the performance rates of our children, um, if you, you can actually go to floridacitizensalliance.com and they have a flow chart of all the counties in Florida. And they also have um, each school per district each high school per district. And for our high schools, according to the US News and World Report for 2019, which is the last full review, we had a 47% math proficiency rate and a 53% reading proficiency rate and a college index, college ready index of 28 out of 100. Unbelievable. What is there a particular state that you know that is much more advanced than yours or than ours, actually. Massachusetts. Why is Pretty that? Much if you go anywhere in, in, in the North, you're gonna have a much higher education than our area or even our, our state for that matter. What do you attribute to the fact that that's the way it is? I mean, why should Florida have such bad schools? Well, you know what? If the real crux of the issue is that our entire country has terrible education. Uh, the problem is, is, is we're looking at state versus state, not state our country versus other countries. We are really far down the totem pole when it comes to rankings versus other countries. 
So we, we tend to focus on how are we doing versus New York? How are we doing versus California? When in, react, in actuality, we're all doing poorly. And that's because they rank our, high, our schools on a uh, scale that's been bumped, basically. It's not an accurate, you know, like we have a, an A-rated school, but if you actually look at the, the percentages and the ratings of the testing, it's more like a C. Hmm. So if you're in a C school, it's really an F. Um, I like to hear solutions. You know, people come up with the problems, but a solution is very important. And I have a feeling that you have some solutions to what's going on. Oh, definitely. First is follow the money. Um, we have a $3.8 billion budget here in Palm Beach County, and we don't even have enough money for our sports teams and marching bands to go to their events. <laughs> you know, and we have such low, low proficiency ratings. Uh, that's because we're top heavy. We are very admin heavy. Plus, we have a lot of programs and contracts that are unnecessary. We need to really trim that budget and get that money where it needs to go. And second of all, we have to scrap the curriculum that we're using and go back to a, a robust, historically accurate curriculum that focuses on actual academics instead of social engineering. They spend most of their time talking about gender fluidity and equality. They don't even talk about equality. They talk about equity, which is very mm -hmm. different from equality. Define that, Jennifer, the difference between equality and equity. It's a fantastic question. Equality is when you give everybody the same basic treatment. We, basically, for as a student, you get the same textbooks. You get the same class opportunities. You have the same level of teaching. And then you allow that student to excel at their own rate and their own willpower. With equity, equity is forced outcomes, forced equal outcomes. So that means bringing down the high achieving child and bringing up the kids that aren't trying to get everybody equal in the name of equality, which um, I have three children. And from a scientific point of view, I am never going to get equal outcomes from my three children and nor do I want to because that's shoving everybody into a box and forcing everybody to be the same and that's not the point of education well if you if uh, I'm just going to ask you this if you had your wishes to come true let you know give us a scenario of what you would like to see in our schools I would love to see us get rid of all of the indoctrination, the critical race theory. I would love us to go back to robust academics with civics and history being promoted and along with the arts. Also, I, I really want to focus on problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, actual critical thinking skills. I've talked to so many employers and they're having to let go of the younger generation because they give them a task at work and they can't sequence how to problem solve and find a solution. Um, so we got to yeah. really start at the drawing board and just teaching kids how to think, not what to think. Then we got to make sure that it's a positive environment where we're encouraging them that they can do it and making sure that we hold them accountable. Um, if they aren't, if they're failing, they need to be held back instead of pushing them forward. If they fail the test, then we need to have meetings with the parents and require the parents attend and say, this is how your child's doing. And you know, we need to come up with uh, a workable plan and make sure that child's invested in that plan. Um, we also need to focus on making sure that our children have life skills. Um, you know, yeah. uh, they, don't, they don't even know how to, what net and gross income is. So, I mean, there's just, there's a lot to do, but we could get there. Well, you know, one of the things that's happened, and I'm sure you realize this, and that is that we're living in a digital world. So if a kid wants to know something, all they have to do is put it in Google or whatever, and they'll find it out. They don't think by themselves. Then, you know, when we were kids, Jennifer, 
we had to go to the encyclopedia and do a little research. But today, it is so easy to find out different things. So you can't really blame um, this, you know, th this new technology because it's really an advancement in our society. On the other hand, you can't blame it because it doesn't give them each person or each child a, a, an, an opportunity to think for them themselves. So I'm wondering what you think about also, you know, the, this computer world we're living in. Well, I like to tell my children, we are in a sea of information, but drowning in ignorance. Uh, just because we have the information doesn't mean people are actually going to go looking for it or even know to go looking for it. That's, that's one thing I've been working with children around the county. And one girl that I was talking to had a deep desire to be a doctor. And I was congratulating her on that. And I started asking her pertinent questions about her goals and how she's going to get to that point. And she had no idea how to get there. And her guidance counselor was giving her completely wrong information. And basically was just giving her the information to get her through high school, not to get her where she need, wants to go. And that's part of the problem is, is the, the de-evolution of education has made it so that people don't even know to question. They don't know to ask questions because of how the teaching methods that they've been using. It's stimulus response, stimulus response. It's the answer to one is B, but you don't know why, and you don't know why A, C, and D aren't. And you don't know to question why they why that's so. Um, it's, it's all in a design so that you know, the powers that be who are trying to, and I, and, and I know this sounds kooky, but it really is a systematic destruction of our country. Because if you don't know to ask questions, if you don't know to think for yourself, you're just going to follow along and do whatever they say and not question it. Well, on that note, it's a very interesting little um, tidbit that I saw on television the other day. They were asking the kid, and it was it was like a commercial. They were asking a kid, how much is two and two? And the kid kept on saying, it's 22. And the teacher kept on asking the kid again, how much is two and two? And the kid kept on saying, it's 22. That is what we have today. Kids who can't even think for themselves, 22. Why isn't it two and two is four? You got to ask that. And that is what's happening now. Kids are not really getting what they need. Math, science, history. It's just really uh, outrageous. That's all I can say. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Oh, totally. And, and part of the problem, you know, reading is critical to every aspect of learning. And early intervention is vital, and that is being thrown to the wayside. Uh, case in point, my youngest son, he actually has a higher IQ than his sister, who has a 5.7 weighted HPA. Um, <laughs> she's brilliant. And um, he was having trouble in first grade reading, and they wanted to lower him. And I said, no, there's, there's something wrong. We took him to the doctor. She said, no, he's 20-20 vision, but his eyes are all over the place. I talked to my sister who has a, a master's in special education, and she said, try color vellum reading strips. The school hadn't ever mentioned that to me. They said it was too expensive. I went online, they were $11. I buy many sets and donate them to the school. Did you know in one month, his Lexile jumped 600 points? Wow. So, well, you know, that's the thing. They're not actually, you know, I'm a, I'm a proponent of IEPs. I, I have two special needs children. And you have to wear body armor to go into these meetings to defend and get services for your child. And then to make sure those services are actually provided. And how much do you, so many parents don't even know what to ask for. They don't know the things that they should be looking for. And the schools aren't helping. They're, they're not giving you that advice. They're not saying, hey, why don't we try this? Hey, why don't we try that? 
they don't work with you. And um, again, they keep trying to fit all these kids into a box that isn't meant for them. And so, you know, I, <laughs> I uh, feel that we, we have got to stop treating children as groups. And, you know, that's where critical race theory comes in. You're, right. you're locked in by your color. Yeah. And we need to start treating our, our students, our children as individuals and help them to learn individually. And, and reading early intervention is a critical part of that. Well, that's a great way to finish the show because you have given us solutions. You've talked about what goes on in the schools and the need for the schools to change its, its policies because needless to say, if we continue doing what we're doing, our children are not gonna learn. Thank you very much for being on the Susan Brender Show. Jen Showalter, it really is a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you so much. And, and can I add one last thing? Sure. Part of, part of our education system, making it better, is when the board listens to the constituents, when they listen to their employers, when they employees, when they listen to the students, and they're literally writing us out of the ability to speak. Uh, they're, they're cutting down our, our time. They're limiting the amount of time that the public can speak. They've written um, quotes to the Palm Beach Post stating that parents aren't actually interested in the children and in the issues, but that they're looking for attention and rallying people up. And uh, I wrote a response to that that was posted um, in the Epoch Times. And I stated that, you know, I've been going to these meetings, every meeting for the past year. And those parents are terrified to speak. I can see their knees shaking, but they, they are there because they see that their children are getting the education that they need and they're willing to step up and say something. So that's another critical aspect to making sure that our education works is having that communication between all levels. Now, one of the things that I think is really interesting is the fact that you share all your ideals and all your information uh, to other parents. So if they want to get in touch with you, because needless to say, they don't know enough and you know a lot, they need to know how to get in touch with you. So how do they do that? Oh, sure. Um, they can go to my website. It's vote Jen. J E N P B S D dot com. So that's vote Jen P B S D dot com. Or you can email me at Jen J E N at vote Jen P B S D dot com. Really was a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really enjoy talking with you and I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, discuss these issues.